Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we'll be talking about how you can actually go out and take your own amazing photographs of that big old galaxy we love and call home, the Milky Way, right after this. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into this video. On this channel, we talk about landscape photography, tutorials on how to take amazing shots, taking you out into the field, gear reviews. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing below. But in this video specifically, we're talking Milky Way photography. Now, night photography has gotten huge in recent years thanks to benefits and improvements in camera technology from companies like Sony, Nikon, Canon, all the big manufacturers are getting in on this low light quality improvement to their cameras. So night photography is like this whole new world of imagery coming out. Now, before you watch this video, I highly recommend that you watch the previous two videos on number one, the best time to see the Milky Way and photograph it. And number two, how to plan out your own Milky Way shots to guarantee you success in the field. Now, I would recommend going ahead and pausing this video and clicking on these cards, one for the best time to shoot the Milky Way, and another card for the other video, number two, how to plan out your Milky Way photography. So go ahead and watch those two videos prior to viewing this one so you can watch them in order so that you're guaranteed the best possible chances of capturing an amazing Milky Way image. So onto this video, how do you actually go out and photograph the Milky Way? We'll be talking about gear. We'll be talking about techniques and settings. So stay around to the very end of this video to get all the information you can. Number one, like what do you need to photograph the Milky Way? Like there are a lot of things that photographers can get, but I always like to say, keep it very simple. So what do you need? Camera, pretty obvious, but you need a good camera, a camera that has really good low light capabilities. I mean, it doesn't have to break the bank. Like this is a Sony a6000, does really, really well in low light. I'm talking like something that can shoot really strong images with low noise at something like ISO 1600 to 3200. You're not gonna be stretched to find a camera that has that technology within the body itself. So don't fret too much about getting a camera and breaking the bank on something like that. You can buy something like the A6000 and get really good night photography images. You're also gonna need a really good wide angle lens. Now you can also take Milky Ways with telephotos or 50 millimeters, but I like the wide angle lens look. It's like that classic Milky Way look. And it also allows you to collect a lot of light, get a lot of foreground imagery in there too. So get a good wide angle lens. Now, I've already reviewed this lens right here that I've used in the field shooting night photography since I started doing it. I've been using this lens for two years now, shooting the Milky Way. It's the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2. I did a review on it. If you're interested, click the card right here and you can look at the best ultra wide angle lens on a budget. Now it's not the best wide angle lens. It's the best one without spending a lot of cash. You need a good wide angle lens with a large, fast aperture. This is an F2. I recommend shooting the Milky Way anything F2.4 and wider. So an F2 is within that range. So go ahead and look for a lens with wide, fast apertures and you'll be good to go on your lens choice. Cable release. You need a cable release, a good cable release, because this plugs into the side of your camera and when you plug it in, it acts as a shutter. So this is also called a remote shutter if you wanna call it that. And once you plug it in, you can just click this button and it'll take the photograph with your camera. Now you want one of these because anytime you press the shutter on the side of your camera, sometimes it causes that very small amount of shake within your camera. Any small amount of shake is going to show up in a long exposure photograph. We'll get into the long exposure settings for Milky Way photography in just a second but you don't want that camera shake because it's gonna blur out your stars. And it might not be noticeable on the back of your LCD screen, but when you blow it up or print out a photograph, it's really, really noticeable. So invest in our cable release. These are like 10 bucks on Amazon that you can get. I'll link this one below. But 
you can get some really cheap cable releases. You can get some really fancy, expensive wireless ones as well. But go ahead and invest in one of those for night photography and Milky Way photography specifically. You also need a really sturdy tripod. With long exposures, you need to be guaranteed that your camera is not going to shake at all. Now, I use the Vanguard Alta Pro, and I'll link that below as well as a really good night photography option. Yes, it's heavy, it's an aluminum tripod, but I also like that because when it's really windy, I know it's sturdy and not gonna blow away like some of the lighter tripods you can get. It's kind of a trade-off and personal preference on the tripod use of carbon fiber versus aluminum. And I can't really show that tripod right now because it's actually holding up the camera that you're looking at me through, but um, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it anyways. You also need a really good headlamp. Now, not just any headlamp, you need a headlamp that's going to shine red light. Now, a lot of the headlamps that you can find shine white lights, but a dual one is going to be really good. White for hiking out to your location, red for the actual shoot processes. But why, why red? Why do you need a red light on your headlamp? Well, you need a red light because when you're photographing the Milky Way, it's kind of hard to see with your naked eye. With a red light, your eyes don't readjust to white light and you can be able to see the Milky Way, you can be able to see where you're setting up your tripod, where you're standing, all those things are going to remain within what you can see at night with your eyes. So a red headlamp, really beneficial. Once again, all these things linked below in the video description for you. And lastly, my favorite thing to take on night photo shoots, coffee. Now I recommend the instant coffee. This is the Starbucks. This is a very fancy via instant cafe mocha. I highly recommend taking coffee with you. You're going to be shooting Milky Ways at like 3 a.m., 2 a.m., you know, really early hours of the morning. Sometimes once the sun goes down till like one or two in the morning. So coffee, always, always a good investment in my opinion. Okay, so you have all the gear you need. Now, now what's next? How do you start taking those photographs? Number one thing you need to do is set your infinity focus point during daylight hours. Now, a lot of lenses have an infinity focus point that you can easily see. Mine's right here. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. Mine's right there on my lens. And you would assume that with an infinity mark right there, you could just slip the focus ring to infinity and it would adjust to infinity focus because it's on the icon. Well, not so much. Not all lenses have the infinity mark perfectly on this point. I've noticed with my photography and with my Milky Way photography, I have to move this slightly to the left to get the focus to infinity point exactly right. I highly recommend going out and testing this in the field during the day, maybe while you're scouting, and see where your exact focus to infinity point is. You can easily discover this by having your camera on your tripod and looking at something really small, really far off in the distance, and then zooming in on that object through your LCD screen and focusing that infinity point until that thing is tack sharp. Then you can zoom back out and make sure that your foreground and everything's in focus, but that's the best way to do it. To freeze your lens on that point or know exactly where that's going to be. You can tape your lens down with some duct tape or painter's tape, anything like that. You can mark it with a grease pen or even like one of those silver Sharpies to know exactly where that point's gonna be. I've just marked mine with my memory because I've shot the Milky Way so much with this lens, I know exactly where it is and exactly where to twist my lens to. But do that during the day because at night, it's going to be extremely difficult to do. All right, the settings you can use to photograph the Milky Way. Remember, I'm talking about keeping this really simple and not over complicating everything. So let's talk exposure first. We're using a really long exposure to photograph stars because you want to bring in a lot of light. The longer exposure that you take, the more light that your camera collects and the more light that comes into your camera's sensor. So a really long exposure is proper. But we're trying to get Milky Way shots and getting like tack sharp stars within our photograph. So we don't want the exposure to be too long. It's this really interesting balance between long enough and too long. So I've found that 20 second exposures are best. Anything longer than that, like 25 or 30, you're gonna start to see star trails if you blow up that photograph in a print later on. So I highly recommend 
20 second exposures. That's gonna collect enough light and not show the path of the stars in your print later. Also, like I alluded to earlier, let's talk about aperture. You want a wide, fast aperture. Now I showed you my lens, the Rokinon 12 millimeter and it has an f2, f2.4 or wider. So like f2.4, f2, f1.8, all these things are gonna collect enough light and have a wide enough aperture to collect all of that. Now, you may be thinking like an aperture that wide, how are you getting everything in focus? Well, that focus to infinity point is going to be the key in that. When you focus to infinity, your foreground within a certain range, usually like with a really wide lens, it's like four to five feet to be safe. That focal distance, when you focus to infinity, is going to have your foreground and sky in focus. So it's a really sure way to be sure that everything within your frame is in focus using that focus to infinity point on your lens. Now earlier I also alluded to ISO values that you wanna shoot with your Milky Way photography. Getting a camera that has good ISO quality is huge because you don't want a lot of noise. The longer exposures create a heat within your camera sensor that creates what's called image noise within a photograph. They can also cause heat spots within your photograph that are like red and blue and black dots that are scattered all about the photograph. Now with Cameras, you wanna make sure that they have really good image qualities at high ISOs. High ISOs cause that camera heat and cause noise within a photograph. So anything with a good image quality with ISO value of 1600 to 3200 is going to be your best bet on a camera. You can edit out that noise somewhat in post-processing later, but it's always good to get the shot as right as possible when you're in the field photographing the Milky Way before you take it over into post so that you collect as much quality in the image as possible in the field. So that's really it guys, like don't overcomplicate the process. In review, you know, 20 second exposure, F2, 2.4 to 1.8, something within that range, ISO 1600 are gonna get you really good shots of the Milky Way, good camera with good ISO quality, good sensor, wide, fast aperture on your lens, sturdy tripod, cable release, coffee, of course, are all going to get you really good images of the Milky Way. Now, a lot of people get like really fancy and attach heating elements to their lens so it doesn't fog up or anything in cold weather. Just keep it simple and you're gonna have good quality photographs of the Milky Way when you first start off. You can add that stuff on later. Keep it simple at the beginning, then break that stuff out at the end. Building a firm foundation on your technique of a photograph is always going to give you really good photographs when you start out. Then you can start stacking the expert stuff on later. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you liked this video or found it useful, consider subscribing below. We're gonna have videos like this taking you out in the field, tutorials on how to shoot different things, and even some gear reviews on this channel as well. So be sure and subscribe to get all of those things in your inbox on YouTube. Can't wait to see you in the next video, guys. Good luck shooting. If you're going to photograph the Milky Way, comment below on where you're going. We all like to find different locations where we can go shoot around us. And also, if you use this video to have successful Milky Way shots, consider commenting so that other people can have the same success using this information on how to photograph a Milky Way.